Uh, so tonight's exhibition in this space is Never Odd or Even and features the work of Melinda Lazinski, Kate Mulholland, and Erica Whitney. Uh, three wonderful artists to work with. Um, yeah. So rather than reading their full bio, I'll just give bios, I'll give you just a short highlight. Um, there's a placard on both sides of the gallery that have their more general bios, and we have their resumes in the book up front. But um, Melinda Lazinski is currently based, actually all three artists are based in Houston, but Melinda is based in Houston, um, where she received her MFA in painting from the University of Houston. Um, We've interacted a few times. She was a resident at Lawndale Art Center, um, also at the printing, history, the printing Museum in Houston and the Vermont Studio Center. If you make your way to Corpus in the next couple of weeks, she's also in an exhibition at the Art Museum of South Texas, Texas Women in Abstraction. Yes, gotta love those. Yeah, so um, Melinda currently also teaches at Houston Community College. Um, so I'm gonna just do bio, 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 and then we'll hand it off and give each artist a chance to like talk about a little bit of their work. So um, Kate Mulholland uh, originally is from Youngstown, Ohio, also went to the University of Houston, but studied uh, geosciences, uh, which maybe she'll talk about a bit in her excavations of her work. Um, she's been included in exhibitions like all of these artists throughout Houston, and beyond, including exhibitions at Cardoza Fine Art, Barbara Davis Gallery, uh, David Shelton, and Private Eye, um, and has also been included in the 2019 issue of New American Paintings. So last but not least, Erica Whitney is also a graduate of uh, the MFA program in painting at the University of Houston. Um, she's shown at Front Gallery and BS Projects, um, and she's about to this summer participate in the Sam and Adele Golden Foundation um, art summer sessions residency, if I got it right. <laughs> she teaches throughout the Houston area from Huntsville down, so she's teaching at Sam Houston State University, Art League Houston, and Houston Community College and San Jacinto College. So maybe the most natural way, and I'll jump in, is we'll just go alphabetically and start with Melinda. Uh, so Melinda Lazinski, thanks for telling us a little bit about your work. Awesome. Thank, thank you, Dennis, and thanks everyone for coming uh, through all that traffic. Really appreciate it. Um, so I'm Melinda. Uh, my work is here, and then um, the ceramic and paper pieces in the center. So my degree is in painting, but I've always really just loved uh, materials and different processes and um, experimenting with things and kind of turning things into different work. So a lot of the work that I have here is um, things that have been remade multiple times or flipped different ways um, or with different materials. Um, so the paintings definitely um, came first. And then um, I started making ceramics um, around 2019, um, 2018, and then the pandemic hit, so I no longer had a kiln. Um, so I started working with paper, and that's when I was at the residency at the printing museum. Um, so the, the, on this painting, which is called uh, Purse Dirt, um, this centerpiece here is all um, handmade, uh, dyed and cast paper, um, as well as that um, paper piece on the low plinth, um, which is a new, new piece. So just really trying to kind of always push materials forward and, um, you know, take sculpture in a different direction with a new material based on what I have around me. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the immediate thing I have to say. Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Kate Mulholland. Um, so kind of want to start off with, because it's the precursor to all my work in the show, is that um, so I, how I got into geology. So in Ohio, uh, where I'm from, we would go on road trips all the time, and I'd see all these different um, geological formations. Like Ohio, like Texas, you know, you drive from one side to the other and the land looks completely different. And being the curious person that I am, I was always wondering, well, how does this happen? Like, how is this made? So uh, I initially went to art school and then I left to study geology and ended up at U of H doing both geology and fine art. 
ended up with fine art, best choice. Um, and so since then, I've kind of been uh, experimenting with trying to recreate those processes of um, accumulating material and then taking it back down and having different episodes of that on top of each other, which is very much how the earth is deposited between our feet. Um, so yeah, so initially it was with painting. So this is probably one of the most like closest to the original um, work that I was making. And then being that like in my head, I was challenging what painting is, which traditionally is a, an additive process. I was like, well, let's challenge it a little bit more. Why does it have to be rectangular? Um, so I started pulling shapes from the natural world. Um, some of them I took a couple liberties with and made a little more cartoony just to activate the negative space around it. Um, but yeah, so, and then from that point, uh, over COVID, you know, we were all locked in our homes, food, trash, like your boxes, your stuff, you had to live with this. At one point, um, no one was picking it up, so what do you do with it? Um, so I collected all these materials in my home and was like, there's gotta be something I can do with this. So then I started making paintings out of them, which is how the agates came to be. So in here you see everything from concert flyers to books for uh, the Vietnamese community around the corner from where we lived, um, to like pay stubs, personal letters, uh, everything. So in a sense, it's like using evidence from my own life to actually create terrain um, the same way it's deposited beneath our feet. So, and yeah, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else um, in here that is like very, very interesting. There's just, it's one of these things that like, there's so many of them, there's so many different iterations of them. Each one has its own story and kind of its own, like its own, its own little landmark. Um, so whenever you get a chance, if you spend a little bit of time, you'll be able to meander at your own and like pick things out. It's really nice. Agates. Yes. Agates. So agate is a stone that is actually made of animal. Um, so like, like your flints or your uh, jaspers or anything like that. Like that's actually from dead uh, sponge spores that are spicules, I believe is what they're called, which is actually like bio glass. Like it's a part of their skeleton. So it's deposited and it's like forms in places like off the Gulf Coast of Mexico. Over the years, it just, these creatures die and their sediment lays on the land and then everything else accumulates on top of it and depending on what um, other things are on top of it, the chemicals get altered. Um, so you have color changes and different mineralogy uh, throughout. So in agates, when you cut them uh, through, like sometimes they're like purple and uh, white and green and whatever colors that come naturally to it, um, but there's just like these collages, just so many throughout the world, so many different iterations and so many different um, methods of being deposited. So, That's great. so anyways, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, thank you all for coming. Um, this is my work in this like kind of front area here. Um, I've always been a painter, a 2D person, but I really have enjoyed exploring outside the rectangle and square. And that's, that's always just like been an interest of mine when I'm working. And so um, during the pandemic, I started making these plaster paintings, just like pouring plaster over a panel and like straight up painting on that, but they were so fragile. Um, you know, they broke and things like that. And so I really wanted to continue that exploration of this like weird wonky texture. Um, and it took me a bit to like figure out like where to go and how to do that. Um, but then I realized like plaster cloth was a thing and that is what the majority of my work has been in this show, just like wrapping plaster cloth over material. And then kind of like more recently I decided I was like using tape and just like whatever I could to make that weird 
wonky texture. And then I was like, why am I not like recycling material? So I'm starting to like think more about, you know, like kind of like what Kate was saying, like re recycling mail and things like that. This is actually a mail bag full of mail. Um, and I liked the shape of it. And so, yeah, I, I'm really interested in like just exploring material um, and just, I look at a lot of like form and shape. Um, negative space is a really big thing that I like notice a lot. Um, and I think also a lot about um, control versus like not being able to control things just like in life, but also in painting. So that's a lot of my process is like letting the material do what it does and then like responding to it. Um, Obviously, color is a big thing for me as well. Um, so I think a little bit about color in a way, um, like I want it to be like, you know, similar, like ob obvious, um, I guess like color relationships that feel right, but also maybe like something that's like jarring or just kind of like, you know, makes you feel a different way. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> that was Melinda Lezinski, Kate Maholland, and Erica Whitney talking about their latest exhibit, Never Odd or Even, now on view at the Galveston Art Center. You can view the show until July 10th, 2022 at 2127 Strand, Galveston, Texas, 77550. The Galveston Art Center is open Wednesday to Sunday from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. You can find out more about this exhibit at galvestonartscenter.org.